The advent of social media has changed the landscape of how the world communicates, extending our human touch point beyond our in-person interactions. The act of socializing no longer has boundaries, except if you're a student in the Orange County School District in Florida. They've renewed a program which partners the school system with local police departments to monitor students' social media accounts for criminal or threatening behavior. Snap Trends is the name of the company. It's a data collection firm which filters public posts on students' social media accounts in search of keywords that may signify cases of cyberbullying, suicide threats, or even criminal activity. School security staff then sifts through these flagged posts and alerts police where they see fit. Now, the Orange County School District has allocated $18,000 annually for the monitoring of this software, which is used to check students' daily activity on social media. And similar software is being used by law enforcement in Wisconsin to track criminal activity there. And here was what this plan looked like. There were 2,504 automated searches that were done, leading them to 215 manual searches, with, which led them, excuse me, to 12 police investigations over the last year uh, with some of these students at the school, within the school district. Look, snap trends, you know, way to go, very entrepreneurial of you, entrepreneurial of you to uh, capitalize on invading people's privacy. That's fantastic. I'm so <laughs> thrilled. You hear about universities doing this with students in underage drinking, you know, SJS or Student Judicial Services would send a ran random Facebook anonymous friend request to a student that they suspect of underage drinking, posting these pictures, then they randomly kick them out of school. So I'm wondering if this has a benefit to students or if it's something sort of a predatorial, uh, let's let's catch you in the middle of a crime type thing. Is it a protection aspect, or is it to well, weed out the open, bad? Well, you know, to that point, that's open for discussion because some some local attorneys in the area expressed some of this same concern that hey, some of these kids might be under 18 years of age. There's a privacy you know issue here. Mm -hmm. Their information is being shared. This company has access to these social media accounts. Mm -hmm. Where does that? put us? Where does that put the school district? You know, that's a, it's a tough line, but at the same time, if you have some bully who's picking on your kid online saying, I'm going to beat the crap out of you tomorrow morning when you get to school, you kind of want to know that too. I'm, I'm wondering where the line is drawn and, and who's making those, those calls. Melvin, honestly, does Snap try and make them? They're like, oh wait, well this goes into the criminal pile, but this one is sort of like borderline and right. maybe we'll give the kid a and break. And why does there need to be a direct line with this to the police? Why is this not a school issue? Right? Why doesn't the school monitor this? Or why, let, let's take a step back. Why does Snap Trends, in their monitoring process, why not just give the information to the school, maybe grab that student's school counselor, have an internal uh, a plan that would be put in place, a success plan perhaps even for this particular student. Why the pipeline to, the, to, to police? To criminalize the student? I mean, is juvenile detention the goal? That would be my assumption. I don't know. That's a, that's a great question. At the same time, though, more alarming, we see schools uh, going to these third-party venues to, to spy on students. That's, more, that's the most troubling aspect of this. They did name a positive case with this. There was a young lady who uh, some of the keywords came up in her, on her social media, and, it, and she had keywords such as cutting and no one will miss me. Mm -hmm. And this led them to a further investigation where they found that she had two Facebook accounts. One of them was happy, presented her in a happy light, and the other presented the young lady in a really negative light. And it showed that she was struggling and she was depressed. Well, because of the information that they found, as I said, they, they did an investigation and they were able to get this young lady some treatment. So there is some positive aspect to this. Right, that's good. I mean, that's good, but on the flip side, you can see how it could be abused. Absolutely. Well, careful the things you post, everybody. You never know who could be watching.